The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa Chapter 2 The Unsentimental Farmer The day we set off again, the music filled the silver van once more. The kind that sounds like a magician is about to whisk a doe from a hat. Satoru said the title was Necklace of Olive. How come there was no dove in the title? If it was up to me, I'd put one in. How about calling it The Special Relationship Between a Dove and a Silk Hat? It's nice to have good weather again today, isn't it now? Satoru was in a great mood. All cats get sleepy when it rains. And I was wondering, does weather affect humans physically too? Going for a drive isn't much fun if it's not sunny. Ah, so... <clears throat> So it was a question of mood. Humans are so easygoing. A cat's behavior is controlled by real life factors, and for strays, the weather can be a matter for life and death. Our success rate in hunting changes too. We'll take a break at the next service station. Unlike when we get to Kasuki's place, the road we were taking on that day had very few places to stop. So Churu said it was called a motorway. Basically, the only time the silver ring would stop was when Satoru announced that we were heading to a service station. Satoru so said that this road had to, we had to take was intended <clears throat> to travel far away, and this trip was indeed a long one. It was the previous morning that the silver van had left home, and we had drove along the highway all day, and then stayed overnight at a place where they allowed pets. With it being such a long trip, the space in the van had been compartmentalized. <clears throat> if you will excuse me a second. As I slipped off the passenger seat towards the back of the van, Satoru asked, Something wrong? And glanced at me. Ah, sorry. Yeah. My toilet was on the floor at the back. A new one Satoru bought, which had a hood on so the litter didn't fly over the place. This way, Satoru and I could go as far as we went in our silver van. I thought it would be great if we could travel together for the rest of our lives. Nana, we are going to just pull into a service station. Okie dokie. I answered vaguely. <clears throat> reeking up the leader between my legs. Once Satoru had parked in the silver <coughs> service station and pulled up my food and what <coughs> from the back, he had placed them on the floor and in the van side by side, f filling one of the bowl with crunchies and and what the other a plastic bottle. <coughs> I'm going to the toilet. Satoru hurriedly shut the door and strolled off. He looked like he really had to go, but it's such a good owner he had to take care of my needs first. I was wetting my whistle with the water when I heard a tapping on the window. Not again. I glanced behind me to see a couple of to see a young couple, face plastered on the glass, staring in my direction. They had goofy smiles. A cat. You got that right. A cat I am. So a cat eating crunchies isn't so rare a sight, is it? Oh, look, it's eating. How sweet. So sweet. Hey, you idiotic couple. How would you like it if somebody pointed at you while you're eating? And today happens to be a chicken breast and gourmet seafood blend. How come cat lovers spot me every time? Whenever we take a break, they swarm around me. Pretty amazing if you think about it. If you guys were the ones who fed me, <clears throat> then I'd be as sweet to you as the quality of the food that merited. But Torturo is the one who feeds me, so let me focus on my food, okay? I decided to ignore them and dive back into my crunchies. With some screeches and giggles, they only <clears throat> they seemed to give up and wander away. It was only a moment later when somebody's red hot gaze on me, and I <clears throat> looked up <clears throat> despite myself. And this being a scary looking goblin <clears throat> faced old man. Yikes! I jerked away on reflex, and the old man looked really hurt. Come on, anybody would have to shudder in, in her. In her <clears throat> Come on, anyone. If you, I'm guessing you like cats? This was from Satoru, who had come back. The old man, a bit flustered, replied, <clears throat> Sure is a cute little kitty. Cute little kitty? I looked up and meowed on the other side of the window, and Satoru uh, smiled and nodded. Would you like to stroke him? <clears throat> Are you sure? The man started to blush like a girl, and Satoru opened the door, and I clambered in my seat. The old man <clears throat> reached out and let me stroke him, and his face began to <clears throat> glow. No way! A cat! The shriek came from a clump of garbus, girls with dyed blonde hair and a thick, make thick makeup, who <clears throat> were passing by. I want to stroke it. Can we touch him after you? Get lost. I bared my teeth and made my fur stand on the end. A group of Garak streets again. Oh my god, he's angry, and ran off. I wanted to give him a stroke. <clears throat> the tall one whined. It's okay. 
That kind of cat with those eyebrow markings isn't cute anyway. Excuse me? This insult was so unfound that my face wouldn't kind of flamen response. I curled up on my back and bared my front teeth like a tire. You are so cute, Nana. Very cute. Mr. Turtle hurriedly interjected. Those girls are a bit loud. I'm sure their sense of what's beautiful is different from most people. Let's just go. No, he really is a cute cat. Nana, you said his name? Yeah, because his tail is hooked into the shape of a seven. I don't think we need to explain the origin of my name to every passing stranger. But Sartori was always conscious about when it came to things like that. <clears throat> maybe he isn't the time, and <clears throat> maybe he isn't the type that doesn't let people touch him much. Yes, he's very choosy about who he allows <clears throat> to touch him when we're out and about. I see, the old man said, smiling even more broadly. And he gave me one final lingering pat on the middle of my back and walked off. Kinda unusual, isn't it, you know, for you to let every passerby stroke you for the long. True enough. How should I put it? I was making amends, a sort of atonement, no need to analyze it any further. <clears throat> the van had been driving along for a while, and the next I stretched out to look out at a passenger window. The sea! I think you'll like the sea, Nano. Until then, I'd only see it in the front... The TV in Satoru's front room. I used to watch from my blanket in the corner to see it was. To now see it for real was amazing. It, and it was. The sparkling deep green water was completely stunning. And the idea that the water lur lurked all the delicacies made up my gourmet seafood blend. Oops, I'd started to drool at the thought. If it was like the last time, you'd end up coming back to me and choosing one of those sweet delicacies. The sea was soon out of sight, and I drifted for a bit, drifted off for a bit, and then went lazy openly my eyes, and the scene had become tranquil and contrifted. Oh, you're up. We're almost there. The show said the van pulling up soon at the front yard of our farmhouse. I had learned that when you had to go to an unknown's house, it's best and safest to be in a place you're used to, or when you can barricade yourself in. So the opened the back door and with the basket <clears throat> with me inside. Satoru Miyawaki! The sound of a welcoming voice. I peered through the bars and saw a man in work clothes and a straw hat <clears throat> heading towards Satoru. Hand held high. Yushimin, how have you been? Satoru said. I was excited too. You're looking good. I work all doors all the time, so your body naturally gets strong. <clears throat> have you, haven't you become a little thinner? Have I? I guess just the uh, unhealthy city lifestyle. The two of them clapped each other on the back and headed towards the main house. Did you have any trouble finding my place? No, that <clears throat> sat nav made it easy. I didn't think you'd come back all the way from Tokyo and flying the car. Flying would have been easier, and going by the road is a bit pricey. Absolutely. You have to take calls on the motorway service stations and pet friendly little hotel and stay in the night. <clears throat> by the time we got here, Tutorial had opened his wallet several times. <clears throat> if I had flown, then Nana would have sto been stored in a luggage hold, which was thick and noisy. One time, I took another cat on the plane, and it was terrified for the entire day after we landed. Cats can't understand why they're in a situation like that, but I feel bad if Nana had to go through it. Okay, I may be a little terrified, but I'm a little offended that he'd think Hachi could make it, and I couldn't. Um, surely I'm a little more intrepid than Hachi. After all, until I was an adult, I survived stray on the streets. Instead of worrying about me, you should worry all about the money you've spent on this trip. Inside the main house, Yoshimin showed us the living room. Satoru placed my basket in the corner in the, and opened the door. Satoru was crouching. Yoshimin was crouching in front of my basket. Mind if I take a look at Han Nana? He said, peering in. Sure, but it might take a bit of time for him to get comfortable to get out. No problem. What do you mean, no problem? I tilted my head in puzzlement, and there's just that instant, a thick arm shot into my cage. Hey, what? A fat arm dragged me out by the scruff of the neck without so much by your, by your leave, dragged me out, and dangled me up on the air. What, what, what the hell are you doing, you barbarian? Good, he's a proper cat. What do you mean by that? Hey! So true, horrified, gave Yoshimin a healthy shove in the back. What do you think you're doing? I wanted to make sure he's a real cat. Yoshimin explained, holding me by a thick arm. I tried to kick my C3, but the kick <clears throat> thick arm took my kicks like it didn't budge an inch. What do you mean? Look, you hold him like this, see? Don't hold him like that. If Vasilis fold up, you do this. If he 
He's a real cat. Let me go. I put my legs together and kicked off Yoshimi's arm, flopping like a salmon. Finally, I was able to break free. <clears throat> One. I twisted my body around and landed perfectly on four paws, peeking my belly low on the ground. And I <clears throat> turned to meet Yoshimi's eye. He said, Whoa! Clapped, clapped his hands. <clears throat> One fine cat you got here. Well coordinated and smart. Outstanding cat. I guess I under <clears throat> underestimated him. Yeah, I guess so. That can't be true. Of course I'm well bred, but still, Satoru <clears throat> said instinctively. Still, that's not the point. Great minds think alike. <clears throat> Why'd you grab Nana by the neck like that? It startled him. <clears throat> that's the reason is. I found a stray recently that isn't a real cat. If Nana turns up to like that one, there wouldn't be much point. <clears throat> a farmer's perspective in having him, so I would <clears throat> have to check him out. This unpleasant guy came over to try to play with my tail, which I was waving slowly to show my displeasure. I spun around, only to find an orange tabby male kitten beside me. He appeared out of nowhere and was meowing, trying to cling onto my hooked tail. What a pain. Yoshimi grabbed the kitten by the scarf of the neck and picked him up. The kitten's leg drooped down a <clears throat> in a line. This one isn't a real cat. See? True. This kitten didn't seem equipped with the natural ability of most cats. He was the kind, like Hachi, that would never catch a mouse. Even if he could hone his skills through training, he would never be a true hunter like me. He's still just a kitten. You shouldn't treat him so roughly. So Troy reached his hand out, fluttering in the air. That stop that, Gester. He also means thrust that kitten at him. Here, feel free to stroke him if you like. I'd love to. So Troy was a die in the wool cat lover, and I would, like I said, go ahead and get all lovey dovey with that kitten. See if I care. It had been a long time since Yoshimin had received an email from his former junior high classmate Sotoro Miyawaki. He, he had just been thinking about him when the email arrived. A few quick words to bring up him up to date. Sotoro issued his request. I know this is a bit sudden, but can you take my cat from me? He's really precious to me, he went on, but unavoidable circumstances made it impossible for me to keep him, and I'm looking for someone to adopt him. There were two things Yoshimin could read in this message. One, that his cat devoted friend had once more found a cat he loved, and two, that he was once again have to part ways with it. When it came to cats, Daigo Yoshimin could take them or leave them. If there was one in the house, he'd notice and look after it. But he wasn't passionate enough about adopt one himself. He felt the same way about dogs and birds. But having a cat on the farm did have its advantages. On farms, mice inevitably caused damage. And a cat was a pretty good means of control. He tapped out a reply. I don't think I'd look after the cat you the way I, you do. I treat them like cats, not pets, if you're okay with that. I'm happy to take him off your hands. If you can't find anyone else, then let me know. Rest assured. I'll make sure he's looked after. He's looked after. <clears throat> Satoru wrote back thanking him. I promise to show you him to one river to the prison first, he said. But if that doesn't work, I'll be counting on you. A month later, Satoru wrote back after he if he could bring the cat over from Yoshimin to meet, and by coincidence, it was during this time that Yoshimin happened to find the kitten. I was driving down the highway in my truck when I saw him lying on the side of the road like a limp dish rag. I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if I had just left him there. I see. True seemed to melt with a orange tabby kitten in his lap. Cat lovers have a special place in their hearts for kittens. You did a good job bringing up the steeny guy. Was it hard? I needed the vet a few times. But there were other folk in the neighborhood of cats, and plenty of people ready to give advice. But this was the countryside, and people weren't all that particular about the way they brought cats up. It was a lot easier once he started eating cat food. So Shrew burst out laughing. I'm trying to imagine you feeding kitten milk from a bottle. You're lucky, aren't you? So Shrew said in the kitten, tickling him vigorously under the chin, to be taken by such a kind owner. I'm not that kind. I was hoping he'd catch a mouse or two around the place, but he's not a real cat, so I'd feel a bit down. So, now that he's recovered, are you going to throw him out of the house? Yoshimin put, <clears throat> looked put out by Satoru's teasing tone. Satoru stroked the kitten in his lap in, in contented silence. Then he said, I get it now. That's why you were asking <clears throat> whether Nana was a real cat or not. If I brought the, bring up the two of them, and they're both useless, then the <clears throat> all that cat food is, is a total waste. I knew you wouldn't <clears throat> turn Nana down. Well, I can't exactly refuse a guest who's driven away <clears throat> here from Tokyo just for a cat. I get it. Answer responded as if he didn't really accept the explanation. By the way, what's the kitten's name? Chatrin. That's pretty silly. Is it?
<clears throat> Yoshimi asked the neighbors who owned cats, and one person said, An orange tabby? That reminds me of Chatrin. He liked the name and decided to use me. The, since that movie, The Adventures of Chat Ring came out, it became a cl bit of cliche to call an Orby <clears throat> Orange Tabby Chatrin. Hmm, <clears throat> I didn't know that. And this Chatrin with a silly name recognized a real cat level and was fully relaxing into Satori's lap, stretching his paws on Satori's cheek. This brings back memories. I used to have a cat like this, who did this. Satori never named his cat he used to have. Do you understand me? He felt that if he spoke his name aloud, all that pent-up affection and sadness would break his heart again. And even someone who knows nothing from the universal benefit of cats couldn't understand that. Yoshimine had transferred into the junior high school in the spring of the second year. This is Daigo Yoshimine, who will be joining at you as your new, <clears throat> us as your new classmate. The former teacher was a striking woman who had won some Miss Something or Other contest back in college, but <clears throat> Yoshimine disliked her from the start. When she explained class in great detail why he had moved to their school, she made a very sound and close and intimate and oozed sympathy. He had gritted his teeth and let her words wash over him, but what he couldn't fend off was the timing. Yoshimi Kun's parents are busy with their jobs, so he transferred here and will be staying with his grandmother. We should all admire him for his enduring the loneliness of being away from his parents. I'd like you all to be friends with him. He understood that her overly intimate manner was because she felt sorry for him, and deep down, that disgusted him. Even to an immature class of junior high students with a little worldly experience, it was crystal clear that this was the worst possible way to introduce a new student to his classmates. Yoshimin Khan, why don't you say a few words? Yoshimin turned to face the teacher. Why did you tell everyone about my family like that with my permission? I never asked you. A uh, murmur ripper through the classroom, and the teacher was taken aback, and a smile faltering. Uh, I thought he would help you settle in. No, in fact, it made me uncomfortable. I want to be peaceful <clears throat> to be friends with like me without my family being a part of it. I understand, but the thing is, the teacher mumbled, there was no way this was going to turn out well. Yoshimin <clears throat> turned to face the other students. Hi, I'm Diego Yoshimin. There's nothing special about my family, so I just we can <clears throat> we can just get along <clears throat> like anyone else. A deathly hush descended onto the classroom. Right from the start, he'd put them off. As for a form teacher, she looked on the verge of tears. What do you want me to sit? Then just the bell went, signaling the end of form time, and the teacher left the classroom in a hurry. Just sit down on an empty chair. It was Sotaro who said this, pointing to his seats at the back. The first period was over, and his other classmates eyed the new boy warily, keeping their distance. Sotaro approached him without hesitation. The next class was science. Yoshimin gathered his textbook and left her room, Sotaro leading the way. <clears throat> Listen, something was bothering Yoshimin, and he had to ask, Are you being nice to me just because of what the teacher said? Not at all, Satoru said. I thought it was all pretty childish, on both parts. You mean, me? That teacher is, likes to be super kind to kids who have issues on going at home. She doesn't <clears throat> mean any harm by it. Something in the way he said this, the desire to be kind and mean no harm, made Yoshimin feel like he had something in common with Satoru, a kind of connection. Right, right after I entered the school in the freshman year, she did the same thing to me, I, so I get where you're coming from. When I was in elementary school, my parents died in a car accident, and now I live with that aunt. But that doesn't mean I want to go <clears throat> out of my every way tell everybody in class about it. The circumstances of Satoru had so casually mentioned were so much serious than Yoshimi's, so surely the teacher might have put an even more annoying display of concern. We have, you don't need to complain about every little thing, just as it takes comes. Be grown up about it. A little too philosophical, aren't you, for a second <clears throat> high school junior, <clears throat> second year junior high schooler? <clears throat> Yoshimin thought, but what Sartoru said made sense, so he didn't argue. Still, Sartoru said with a grin, to tell you the truth, I feel good when you said that. Back when I started school, I wanted to say what I, you did say, what you actually did say. Sartoru, <clears throat> Yoshimin changed the subject. What's your name? Sartoru Miwaki. Nice to meet you. He didn't have to say anything like, let's hang out. For this time, they were already friends. From day one, Yoshimin hadn't got on with his classmate on, or his former teacher. But being friends with Satoru made life at school go more smoothly. Satoru also apparently straightened out things with the teacher, and Yoshimin had no idea how he had won her, how he had won her over. But one day, she stopped in the corner and tearfully apologized. I'm so so sorry, Yoshimin-kun. I didn't understand how badly you were feeling. Yoshimi felt as if some huge misunderstanding was about to occur, but it was too much to explain things. It would be too much trouble to explain things, following the advice to be grown up about it in an encounter with a quick, it's okay, don't worry, Yoshimi kun His teacher added, I won't mention your family's situation again. So it seemed there was some 
major misunderstanding about his family situation, which only Satori correctly grasped. My parents, Yoshimi had to explain to him, both work really hard and love their jobs too, too much. His father was an R&D at Top Electronics Company, and his mother worked in a foreign investment for a multinational trading company. They were hardly ever at home, and Yoshimi often went days without seeing them. Since spring, they both become even busier, and I can't seem to find any time for their family, including me. His parents had tried to offload responsibility for their son onto his older brother, and their preoccupation with work had quickly led to total neglect of their household. So they decided to send me to live with my grandmother on my father's side until things settled down. He didn't think it was a big deal, but he also found it kind of embarrassing when his teacher went old gushy about how see, sad he must be, because there are a lot of kids with much tougher backgrounds. Take Satori, for instance. Hey, Yoshimin, a classmate called down to him in the corner, putting an end to their conversation. You interested in joining the judo club? No. Nope. The shoulders, the classmate's shoulders drooped in disappointment, though he didn't stop trying, dangling in possibility of you. So, what do you say? <coughs> He asked. I say no thanks. With his sturdy build, he was continually being invited to the school sports team, but Yoshimi turned them all down. Aren't you interested in school clubs? I don't like sports much, he replied. He certainly had a athletic physique, but he disliked games with too many rules. What about other kind of games? If there was a gardening club, I might join. His mother's family were farmers, and he only enjoyed digging, <coughs> always enjoyed digging in the soil. His grandfather had passed away a few years before, and his grandmother had only been managing to keep the family plots going, so Yoshimin had been pitching in. There's a greenhouse in the corner of the school grounds. I wonder if anyone's using it. The greenhouse had been on Yoshimin's mind ever since he transferred to school. I never thought about it. You interested? My grandmother's crops are all outdoors. I've never worked in a greenhouse. You really are into a farming, aren't you? Yoshimin thought that was the end of the matter, but Satoru brought it back again later. I looked in the garden league club thing. They stopped it a few years ago because the membership numbers fell, but if you're interested, the scientist said, science teacher said he'll run it, even if it's just the two of us. We can use the green <coughs> greenhouse. Two things surprised Neoshimin. One, that Satoru actually looked into it, and two, that he was taking, <coughs> planning to take part himself. You want to be in the club too? Neoshimin asked. I'd like to give it a try. But you're not into gardening or anything <coughs> like that, are you? I wouldn't say I'm not interested, I just haven't <coughs> had anything to do up until now. I've never really known farmers. Really? Nobody? Not even your grandma or your gran grandfather or grandmother? A total city boy, Yoshimin thought, but Sotoru dis waved with a dismissive hand. It's not like that, he said. My parents didn't have much to do with their relatives. My parents on my mother's side died when she was still young, and my father didn't seem to get on with much of his parents very well. And the first time I met them at, was at my parents' funeral, and we didn't talk much. Yushimi understood why now Sotoru's aunt had taken him in. If your parents died and your grandparents were in good health, it's likely that that's where you'd go. Pretty unusual for a single woman to take a young boy in. I'd reckon this might be only my chance to give it a go. Sotoru said, laughing. I've dreamed about living the country life, like Miyazaki's film, My Neighbor Totoro. Do you know it? And the, so the two of them revived the gardening club. Yoshimin's grandmother also invited Sotoro over to their <clears throat> home to experience life on a working farm. Sotoro was a latchy kid since his aunt worked all day, so he began to go over to Yoshimin's home. Sometimes he stayed over th for the weekend. I hope you will become good friends. <clears throat> Yoshimin his grandmother said to Sotoru, what grandmothers typically say when their other children come to play. I always wonder if Daigo, she called him by his first name, is getting on with the first children at school. I hope he isn't getting bullied. I won't worry about that. I don't think there's any chance that Yoshimi would be bullied. What do you mean? Yoshimi said, poking in the ring. You know exactly what I mean. His grandmother, who had been worried that Yoshimi might not make any new friends in his new school, was overjoyed when he brought Satoru home. Very soon, she started calling him Satoru Shan. Shall I buy a video game for you so you can play with Satoru Shan? She asked this because she was concerned that he might getting be getting bored, always helping out in the fields. I genuinely have some, some, Yoshimin said, and so does Satoru. Satoru was gen genuinely enjoyed helping out in the fields. It was kind of a pastoral hobby. We're doing the gardening club at school together, too, and I think he really <clears throat> likes farm work. Yoshimin explained to his grandmother, Really? That, then that's fine, his grandmother responded. At any rate, you've made a good friend here, so I wouldn't worry about you. 
His mother, his grandmother didn't say this once, but at every opportunity, as if reassuring yourself. I guess grandma sees me as a little kid, Yoshimis said, a little trifle embarrassed. With the Toro being so good-natured, and her grandson being best friend to the boot, Yoshimi's grandmother fussed over him, and Sartoro grew very attached to her. You're lucky, he said, Yoshimi <clears throat> to, told Yoshimi. I wish I had a grandmother like yours. He had never been close to his grandparents, and seemed to enjoy having a relationship with an elderly person. If you're okay with an old woman like me, Yoshimi's grandmother told him, then consider this like your own grandmother's house. Yoshimi had never teased his friends about all his obvious envy of his grandmother. He had knew that Sartoru tended to keep his distance from his aunt and had no other relatives he could become close to. Come over any time. My grandmother likes you a lot, too. One afternoon, during class, <clears throat> Yoshimi was feeling uncomfortably hot. He glanced out of the window and saw heat shimmering from the ground. It was the time of year when the temperature was often over 30 degrees. He suddenly pushed his chair back and stood up and caused a stir of excitement in the cl class. Yoshimi, what do you think you're doing? His teacher told him. Nothing. Yoshimi said casually and walked out of the classroom. Hey! At uh, <clears throat> times like these, it was Satoru's road to step in. What do you mean? Nothing, he called. I'll be right back. It was Satoru, not their teacher, who ran out of the classroom to get him. What's wrong? He asked Yoshimi when he finally caught up with him. The greenhouse. I forgot to open the vent this morning. It's so hot now. The plants are going to boil. Inside the greenhouse, there are growing tomatoes and other vegetables, as tending some orchards. <clears throat> A hobby of the science teacher. The tomatoes don't do well in rain, so the rooftop environment was perfect for them. But in this region generally has temperate climate. When it got too hot in the summer, they suffered. Why not wait until break? It's only about 30 minutes. But it's the hottest time of day. We have to cool it down as soon as we can. You could have pretended you had to go to the bathroom or something. It'll be your fault if you close down our club. Then you go and explain. Jeez. Yours means when I attacked by gorillas. The Rose report had a classroom in uproar. <clears throat> Though yours means through the entire class in chaos on such occasions before the summer vacation, they got bumper crops of tomatoes and other vegetables they were able to save their teacher's orchards as well. When he was sharing out the vegetables with Satoru and the teacher, Yoshimine ended up taking a portion of tomatoes that were a little larger than the others. Yoshimine's grandmother's outdoor, outgrown, outdoor grown tomato plant had been hit hard by a long rainy season and I qu hadn't quite yielded <clears throat> what she hoped. Take more. There are just two of us in our house, so you don't need so many. <clears throat> Yoshimi bur and Yoshimi burst out laughing. There was only two in Yoshimine's home, and two, one of them was extremely old. Satoru had to come back for that, but you eat m much more than I do. In the space of one semester, Satoru had learned a lot about farming, and picked up on the fact that Yoshimine wanted to grow greenhouse tomatoes as a sort of insurance policy that his grandmother's tomatoes failing. Grateful, Yoshimine went ahead and took three or four extra, dropping them happily into his bucket. I'm going to go home for the first week of the summer holiday. I get it, Satoru answered instantly. I'll take care of the greenhouse while you're gone. Their first crop wasn't all ready, but it was a lot more than will ripen later. And this was the first time you've been home since you came to school, isn't it? Hope it gets okay. Satoru understood the situation. What he didn't just say, oh, that's nice. So Noshimi's parents were taking any time off work to see their son. He was just putting in a token appearance. If they ripen while you're away, I'll take some tomatoes over to your grandmother's. Yoshimi's grandmother gave him another lift to the airport in her little van, and he flew back to Tokyo. Nobody was there to meet him at Haneda Airport. He boarded the airport shuttle and to ride home to a condo in the residential su suburbs. After a semester of his grandmother's, <clears throat> the apartment seemed even smaller and more cramped than before, and his parents were preoccupied as ever. About three days after Yoshimi's home, I arrived home. Both his parents, surprisingly, came home from work early. His mother cooked him dinner, a rare thing, and the three of them sat down together to eat. After dinner, his mother made him tea, and the whole thing had Yoshimi confused. His father, seated opposite the dining table, spoke first in a serious look on his face. We have something to tell you. His mother came home and sat down next to his father. This couldn't be thick. <clears throat> the thing is, Mum and I have to get, have decided to get divorced. Ah, just as I thought, Yoshimi said to himself. <clears throat> he had known that someday it would come to this. Daigo, do you want to come with me or your mother? He looked at his parents' expressions and was forced to confront reality he couldn't avoid. <clears throat> his parents waited expectantly, each hoping he would choose <clears throat> the other. I'm sorry, he finally able to squeeze out 
<clears throat> the words. I can't decide right now. I want to think about it a little more. His parents were clearly relieved that they wouldn't have to deal with the problem right away, straight away. Can I go back to Grandma's <clears throat> place tomorrow? Conf confronted with the fact that neither parent wanted him, he had no idea <clears throat> how he was supposed to behave. <clears throat> Naturally, they didn't stop him. He flew back the following day, and the airline took good care of the unaccompanied children. He was actually grateful that his parents were there to see him off. His grandmother came to pick him up at the air <clears throat> airport and drove him briskly back to her small van. In her small van, mom and dad said they're getting divorced. Is that right? His mother grandmother replied, "I don't know which one I should live with. Well, it doesn't really ma matter <clears throat> because you can live with me." Yoshimine had a huge lump in his throat. You have a good friend here, too, Yaiko. So it's all okay. You have a good friend here, so it's all okay, his mother murmured over and over as if reassuring herself. His grandmother had known what was going to happen, and from the moment her grandson had come to live with her, the, lu the lump in Yoshimin's throat grew bigger, and by the time they arrived, it had started to hurt. I'm going to run over to school. He changed into his uniform, <clears throat> and even in holidays, they weren't allowed to school unless they were wearing it. Why don't you wait until a bit later? It's the hot of time of day now. I'm worried about the greenhouse. Shaking off his mother's objection, grandmother's objection, Yoshimin rode his bike to the junior high, and as he pumped the pedals, and the lump in his throat began to sink into the pit of his stomach. Satoru's so bike was bi parked in the <clears throat> bicycle rack. Inside the inside the greenhouse, Yoshimin found him happily plucking tomatoes and cucumbers. Hey, as Yoshimin stood in the doorway. And Sertoru let out a funny, What's the- Weren't you supposed to come back a little later? Yeah, stuff happened. <clears throat> they washed the vegetable in the sink, and in the shade of the cool building, Yoshimi told Sertoru what happened. Out of his corner of his eyes, Yoshimi watched the baseball team fielding practice and shimmering heat waves radiating from the schoolyard. When they left me with Grandma, I didn't think any major was going on, since my parents had really kind of left me to my own devices, but it turned out to be a big deal. So the form teacher's temp- Sympathy was justified, after all. They were planning to get divorced all along, and they wanted me to understand that. I'm such an idiot. So Toru had been listening in silence, but now he broke on. That's not true, he countered. You just weren't trying to think about it. <clears throat> Yoshimin felt that lump in his throat again. Get over it, he urged himself. Diego never gets any trouble, and that makes things so much easier. If I had been a bad kid who did give them a hard time, then what would have happened? Since Ever since he was little, he had known his parents both overly fond of their jobs and weren't particularly interested in him, which is why he tried his best to be the kind of child who wouldn't require too much of their time and effort, the kind who wouldn't get under their feet. Being a kid never gave his parents any trouble and would at least stop them from being in such a bad mood and keeping things settled in the home front. In that way, Yoshimin, who was always the one holding the fort, could breathe easily. In a few times that his family was together, things did go smoothly, but maybe he was... <clears throat> Maybe all he had done was to prioritize what was easy in the short term. Maybe there's a proverb that says a child is the glue that keeps a husband and wife together. A child who would never, who's never in trouble might keep things peaceful from day to day. When a push came to shove, that child never came unstruck. Maybe the kind of kid who needed more parental affection and made more trouble and glue than their marriage could have held together. <laughs> and off. Yoshimin shook his head in <clears throat> hard to put a stop to the thoughts spinning around in it. There's no use in thinking about something that can't be undone. I shall just let the slump grow bigger. It's already pretty big. Still, he said aloud, parents get divorced all the time. He sighed. <clears throat> he tried to say it casually, but the tail end of his words wavered. You had, a, you had it a lot harder than me, didn't you, Sartori? But I never experienced once my parents acting like I was a nuisance because they were gone. But nothing Yoshimin could say about that. The lump in his throat burst at long last, and when his sobbing finally subsided, Sartori said, Want one? And he fell out his swollen finger in a luscious red tomato. Really now, I thought, looking at Sartori. I was out of the basket, and not sure why, but Sartori left the door open, telling me to come out whenever I felt comfortable. But the thought of the tappy kitten with a stupid name, Chatterin, invading my space was unbearable. Truth be told. Hey, Tappy, you know that owner was, and you know your owner was abandoned by his parents too. But the Tappy was so engrossed in playing with his toy mouse, he didn't hear me. When are you gonna realize how pointless it is to play with a fake mouse, eh? Having a decent conversation with an itty bitty kitten this young was out of question. He was of the age when he'd eat, sleep, 
leap around a bit, and then suddenly flop asleep in the middle of whatever he was doing, as if his bar batteries had run down. Even when he was in the middle of saying he was in the middle of saying something, if a breeze had made the curtain flutter, he would drop everything and leap at it. Was I that silly when I was at the, his age? I think I had been a bit more sensitive than that. Well, cats mature emotionally at different rates. I felt sorry for the poor kid, and compared to a rare, wise cat such as myself. Stitching together his fragmented history, I gathered from this orange tabby that it was the runt of a litter, and when his month had moved home, he had been able to keep up and got left behind. The fact of a life in the feline world, cats are awkward to bring up, or slow, or easily abandoned. And no matter how hard she tries, a mother cat only has so much milk, and she won't waste any on a lethargic kitten. One of my siblings was like that, overshadowed by the rest of us. It was the kind of kitten you were never sure was there or not, and one day we were suddenly noticed it gone, as if it had never no <clears throat> it never existed. This orange tabby was on the small side for his age, to be honest, not the type you would expect to make it in life. Yoshimin had done a great job bringing him up, and despite being ill-mannered kind who'd grab you by the scruff of the neck the first time he met you, Yoshimin didn't look, just look the other way when a troublesome kitten turned up, so it was clear to me that he had an individual who had a lot of love to give. Even when people, even people who are strong and Bay have something to throw in the gutter. If he had been a cat, Yoshimin would have been top priority in the litter. Okay, be that as it may, you probably shouldn't have made it, little kitty, yet you've given the new lease, <clears throat> new lease of life. So, shouldn't you show some gratitude to Yoshimin for that? Yes, you. I'm talking to you. The orange tabby looked as though he was listening for a moment, but then, clearly not getting what I was saying, started to play around with my tail. Hmm, I guess I'll just have to simplify this a bit. Tell me, do you like Yoshimi? I seem to get, have got that through. He chewed on my tail and nodded. Hey, that hurt. I flipped my tail up. If you like Yoshimi, don't you want him? Maybe, don't you want to make him happy? The orange tail grabbed my tail again, recommencing chopping with his mini jaws. I told you that hurts. <clears throat> I flipped it up again. You do know that Yoshimi wants cats to catch mice for him, don't you? So if you can become a real cat who catch mice, I'm sure Yoshimi would be very pleased. But the orange tabby stopped to chummy for a moment, and I seemed to struck a chord. By the, but by the way you're having, forget it. You're useless. You can't even catch a lizard, let alone a mouse. Okay, what if I teach you the basics of hunting? And not just hunting, but I'll train you to hold your own in a fight against other cats. Yoshimin will be worried if you lose every scrap. I'm putting this in every simple terms like this, and I think I got through it again. He sat up straight and asked me to teach him. Good. In the cat world, good manners are a must. I was about to lead the orange tabby into intro to hunting when Satoru said, Oh, look, the Yoshimin, they started playing together. Aren't they fighting? No, Nana's going easy on him. This is a game, folks. I'm teaching. Whatever. If I carry on like this, maybe I can convince you to keep Nana for me. Well, I'm doing my thing here. If you keep, if you chaps keep doing whatever you're doing, don't mind us. Satoru watched as the Obi orange tabby pounced on the <clears throat> toy mouse as I taught him, and his eyes narrowed into a smile. He's so excitable, just like the cat I used to have years ago. You're right about that. When he's supposed to crack highly and bound, then he madly waves his tail instead. I stretched my tail out smoothly, but this little kitten waved his around like a helicopter. And when he crouched down ready to pounce, he keeps his body way too high from the ground. What was that Nana like when he was little? I found him when he was a grown cat, so I have, don't know what sort of kitten he was. I should have known him then. I'm sure he was adorable. You're right there. My level of cuteness when I was a kitten was... Such that passerbys veered for the privilege of leaving a little something to eat. Now that you mention it, Yoshimin said, as suddenly remembering something, did you see that cat you adopted ever again? Unfortunately, no. It died when I was in high school. I see, Yoshimin said, his voice respectfully mournful. I wish you could have seen him. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I didn't really want to get the word back in my aunt. Whoa there, Satoru. Why on earth aren't you hinting here? I ordered the orange tabby to run through the exercise I taught him on his own and on his own and turn attention to Sotoro and Yoshimi's conversation. Yoshimi's parents divorce went through without a hitch, his parents getting custody of their son, and this was because Yoshimi wanted to live with his grandmother, it also meant he could avoid the inconvenience of changing his last name. And if they had been set free, <clears throat> both his parents went off on overseas postings and appeared to be doing well. As ever, Yoshimin found that living with his grandmother suited him down to the ground. A year passed, and his firm 
f first semester of their last year in junior high. The class went <clears throat> on a school trip to Fioka. Yoshimine realized there was something bothering Satoru, and after he had found out what exactly happened on the school trip, that Satoru's parents had died in an accident. Satoru looked glum for a moment they departed, and on the day of Fukuoka, when they had some free time, <clears throat> he was uncharacteristically quiet, even though he was the usual group with his usual group of friends. Yoshimine was concerned that their trip had tapped into his depressing memories, but with all the other students, it was hard to find an opportunity to talk with him. After dinner, they were with, when they were browsing the souvenir shop in the hotel, he finally found his chance. Are you okay? Satoru looked worried. He, <clears throat> worried. he glanced up at Yoshimine and said in a low voice, I was wondering if I could get to Kakura. A Hakake station in Fukuoka to Kakura was about 20 minutes in the Shinkansen train. So, of course it was possible, only if they were on the school trip where they were. Always alert to the dangers of the students wandering off, their teacher chaperoning the, teacher chaperoning the trips held up a tight surveillance system. Daily activities were scheduled to the minute after checking to the hotel. <clears throat> it was strictly forbidden for students to go on their own. A teacher was always stationed at the hotel entrance. If a student would try to slip out to have a n fun at night, there was a real, very real risk that they might be sent home. So for Satoru to go to the Kokura on its own was, in circumstances, not a good option. In an obedient, sharp-witted Satoru would have had such <clears throat> said such things unless he had very good reason. How come? Yoshimin said. So Satoru told him. It had to do with a cat he had back and was a so <clears throat> parents were still alive and when they died his aunt took him in. He had to give her the cat and his relatives and the Kakura adopted him. My aunt's always so busy and I can't ask her to take Kakura just to see the cat. So I was wondering if we could have a fr free moment in the day where I could just slip away and go there to visit it. <clears throat>